overheated the welder and burned out the secondary winding, secondary coil winding, same thing, basically. The whole thing is called the coil. Each time you take it around, the wire around the iron core, it is generally called a winding. So, I knew I was running hot. I just needed a few more welds to finish up and um, it, I, sure enough, I shorted it out. I melted the casing on the, on the wire. Let me show you here. Pretty bad. I mean, it didn't break the wire like that. I cut that, cut it to get it out of the, the core to remove it, but I think it's focusing on here. You can see all the, a lot of these breaks, the melting, so it needed to be replaced for sure. And I don't, re I don't know what gauge this is. I think it's, uh, well, I know I've got, I took it from Romex that you use to, you know, roll, uh, wire up your home I want to say it's 10 gauge but I don't think it is because this is 10 gauge Let's see. solid core that's what I just bought to replace it and let's do a little side by side if we can I'm not sure. Anyway, I toasted it, fried it pretty good. Um, so what happened with this transformer is generally when I take the winding out, the, the secondary winding that is already in the transformer, when you take it out of the microwave oven, that gets cut out and discarded. This is the primary winding which you want to keep and try not and don't damage it. It's very difficult to cut that this thick block of wire without damaging this one underneath it. Um, and the one above it's even thicker. It's thicker gauge wire. So I saw some uh, videos where they cut the weld up here or down here at the bottom there's two welds um, and so I didn't cut it straight and there was a big gap and then I thought no one ever said anything about how you're supposed to stick it back together oh, that's this fancy new holder I'm trying to do um, no one ever said anything about how you supposed to put it back together what, what do you do with it you can't weld it if your welder if you're making creating a welder how are you gonna weld and I guess if you had another welder on hand a different style like a MIG welder or a TIG and you were trying to you needed to use a stick welder for whatever reason um, so I tried welding it and I think it's the electrical current that's running through here and you put the rod inside that field, electrical field, it didn't want to stick. It just kept bubbling up here on the side. You can kind of see where it was here. It would just kind of stick up here onto the side, burn, melt a little bit of the iron core as it tried to stick, but it, it wouldn't fill the hole. JB Weld, it vibrates too much for JB Weld, any cup of super glue. So, until I can find a microwave and place it, I just ran some, some uh, wire through these holes. Up over the top and twisted it all together. 
and then twisted it together this way too. That's why it looks like that. It's just temporary though. Um, I did have it clamped together and it did it did just fine. What happens is if there's a break in this iron core, the field isn't contained, leaks out, and you lose any type of uh, heat that the field would generate. It just, that's my as far as, as far as my understanding of it goes. So I am going to I'll record this when I uh, put the when I do the windings for this coil. I'll record it. A few things to keep in mind. So I am going to record while I do the windings for this coil. And before I get started, like I said, be careful when you're cutting this one out. That's the method I would use unless you have a welder to weld back together. I would cut this out with a hacksaw, uh, a Dremel. Just be very careful when you get down here. It's hard to see. And the wires are so small, they start fraying, um, and it, it's difficult to see what you're doing precisely. And then you have to put it on its side, take a hammer and a, uh, a chisel or something that's got a, enough surface area to hit against there and push it through to the other side. You do one side, then the other side. It's, it's a pain in the butt, but it's the best alternative to that <laughs> top knot over there. Um, these shunts, there's shunts that are in here, pieces of iron, flat pieces stacked together and they're wrapped. Try, don't lose those, um, otherwise you're gonna have to make your own. They are relative to the configuration of the electrical field that is generated. Um, and try not to lose the paper that goes around them. Otherwise you will be doing stuff like this where not, not only around the shunts, but the paper inside these too. You want, if you can keep it, keep it. A lot of times it's stuck to the inside and you just have to scrape it out. Um, what I'm using here is I have a sheet of gasket maker where you can cut your own gasket and I wet it to soften it up and then that's what I'm using there and I believe that's what I'm using on these shunts too because uh, I just tossed them off to the side this is the the first this, these are the original transformers this will be the first time I'm replacing the windings it's been uh, almost two years um, I'll put some pictures in of a couple of projects that I've used the welder to build but uh, anyway you want to have these corners on the inside covered as much as you can because the vibration will let's take a look at this one if we can get a good shot here so let's do this and uh, you can see maybe you can see how it rubs up against there real tight in that corner now this one is covered but the vibration will hit this corner, eat into the casing, the sheath, or sheath, yeah, sheath of the your wire, and once it touches the body of this, you short it out. And uh, I've had that happen, and I just pulled the wire out a little bit and put some tape around it, and it was good to go. <laughs> so, uh, all right, we'll get into all that later. So, here we go.
All right, we've got the windings in, the coils in. When uh, you saw when I first started how I took a screw and held one side of the winding down, or the coil down, and uh, it's also important to pay attention to the direction that you start. You want to start with your first, you know, with the, the first lead going through this way opposite of the primary coils um, connections here and also you want to pay attention to leaving yourself set up because they're going to sit like this next to each other and you want the two leads that come off here um, to be short and the, the two in the center here to be short because they're going to be soldered or connected however you want together and the other two leads here off that they'll be on the outside. You want to make sure you have the longer ones um, to the outside and one will go to your grounding clamp and the other to the electrode holder 